In this video, I'm going to talk about the spin of spin one-half particles. And so in the previous video, we had found for orbital angular momentum, we found these fundamental commutation relations. Uh, we found the eigenvalues for, for well, in the last time it was L squared and LZ. And we found the eigenvalues for the lowering and raising operators, which was L plus and L minus. Uh, and so in this one, I'm using S. But what I'm showing here is we can actually use these same results that we had from last time. So all this stuff here. Because when we talk about angular momentum for an orbit, so say we have the, the sun here and we're thinking about the, the Earth and it's orbiting around the sun this way. So that, that has an angular momentum as it orbits the sun. But we can also think of, if we zoom in on the Earth here, uh, and so it looks like this. And so this is spinning as well. So there is a spin like this. But when we think about a spin like that, all we're doing is essentially talking about the orbit of each little sort of patch of dirt on the Earth as it as it orbits about the center of the Earth. And so this spin and the orbital angular momentum, uh, even though in classical mechanics you often see different equations for these, uh, for this, for our purposes, we can think of them in pretty much the exact same way, except uh, when we're talking about particles like an electron. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking the surface of this and sort of collapsing it down and down and down until all we have is just the center. And so that's why people talk about with in quantum mechanics when they talk about spin, you often hear the, you know, the sort of uh, qualification that, that, you know, well, it's not, there's nothing really spinning going on, you know, because something that is just a single point, it doesn't have any sort of volume, uh, can't really spin. Uh, a single point can't spin. But we talk about these spinning because the way they behave is as if they are spinning, which, uh, and I've talked about this in previous videos, how how a particle will sort of bend uh, in a magnetic field, which uh, I'll actually be talking about in the couple videos after this uh, in a little bit more detail. But I talked about in previous videos how uh, these things bend in a magnetic field similar to, uh, so like if you ever play ping pong and you hit your ping pong ball and you sort of pull this way on the paddle while you hit it, uh, you give it like a, a spin that way, which causes it to sort of arc in the air. And so uh, it, it kind of behaves as if it's spinning. And so that's why they call it spin. Uh, but anyway, that's all just preamble to say that we can still use these same things that we got in the previous video on orbital angular momentum. And so we can use this uh, these same eigenvalues for the S squared uh, and for the Z component of of the spin and for the raising and lowering operators. And so we see that the possible values for S, uh, once again, we ha can have uh, half integers. So we go from zero to a half to one to three halves to two and so on. And then M uh, goes between minus S all the way up to S. Uh, and so for spin half, uh, we're going to kind of go from minus one half to plus one half uh, in general there. And so in spin, uh, what we're using is actually what's called a spinner. Uh, so I've heard people pronounce it spinner, like there's, you know, how you think spinner. I've heard it spinor, where you kind of uh, you kind of emphasize that there's an O in there. But uh, so I kind of you know, waver back and forth on that. So a spinner uses, uh, use for the intrinsic angular momentum of a particle, uh, and they tend to use chi for this. So this is the Greek letter chi. Uh, and a spinner is uh, a two, a two component um, vector like this. And so uh, we have chi with a subset or 
for a plus uh, and a chi with a minus, uh, uh, a subscript plus and minus there for the uh, the basis vectors or basis spinners, I guess. And then we have A and B here for the components. And so we can use the uh, chi subscript plus with the one zero for our our basis here, and then the chi minus with the zero one for that base. And, and so each of these bases uh, correspond to the spin up and the spin down on this. All right, and so we can uh, try to look for uh, what what this s squared is here. And so we start uh, with this. So we use our s squared, the operator s squared, on our uh, chi plus basis vector. And that gives us this same uh, eigenvalue here. And so with spin up, and I'm going to use this notation here because that's what the Griffiths textbook, which is what I've based this on, uh, uses. And so that is sort of our chi plus. And then so this first half here is for the S, and the second half is for the M. And so our S is one half, and M is one half. And so we uh, use this again. And so uh, so we just take half and substitute that in for each of these s's and it gives us this uh, and so then I, we just distribute this half in we get this one fourth plus uh, one half and so we end up with this and then we just add those together and so we get this as our our eigenvalue on the uh, chi plus spinner and if we do the same thing with the chi minus which uh, the difference there is that the M is now minus, but since we're not using M in here, there's no M in our eigenvalue. Uh, we just end up with the same thing here. So this one and this one right here. So those are our, our uh, those are the eigenvalues for our S squared here. And so if we want to find the uh, elements of the two by two matrix representation of S squared, so we can just put uh, some arbitrary letters in here and just try to solve for it. So uh, now we're acting with this on our chi plus, which is the one zero. And so we substitute this in for the S squared, these in for the chi pluses, and then we put the this uh, eigenvalue that we just found here in right there. And so what you see is this, you know, multiplied by one just gives you that, and then multiplied by zero gives you zero. So our C and E uh, is equal to this. So this right here in the top, and then the zero in the bottom. And the reason that it's just the C and E is because if you do the multiplication, so you do C, you do C times one, then D times zero, and then E times one, and F times zero. And so you just end up with the C and E. So our C is uh, this three-fourths H bar squared, and then our E is zero. And then we can do the same thing uh, for the other two matrix elements, but now we just do it with the chi subscript minus here. Uh, and we end up with the D and F, and so that's zero, and then this three-fourths h bar squared, so d equals 0, f equals 3 fourths h bar squared. So we end up with this, we factor out the 3 fourths h bar squared, and uh, we get this for our s squared right here. So that is our s squared operator in the matrix form. And then so we want to find the uh, matrices for the s, z, s, X and SY, so we can start with our SZ, and so once again we can use that same uh, that same eigenvalue for it as we got for the orbital angular momentum. Uh, so then we act this on the chi plus, uh, and this gives us the uh, H bar M chi plus, uh, and then the H bar or, or the uh, SZ chi minus gives us the h bar m chi minus. 
Uh, and so then we substitute uh, these m's in. So we substitute in for m. And so it's either minus s or plus s. Uh, and so we know that those are, you know, half, so minus half or plus half. And so we act on this and we end up getting our h bar and then we just substitute in for m. So that gives us h bar half chi plus and then the minus h bar half chi minus there for the sz. And then so to find the matrix elements, we essentially do the same thing we did above. We just use these arbitrary letters here. Uh, we substitute this in for the SZ. Uh, we put this in for the chi plus, then the H bar uh, over two, which is just this part up here in blue in for that. Uh, so this multiplied by the one gives us the H bar over two. So we know that C is equal to H bar over two. We know that E is equal to zero. We do the same thing, but now with the chi minus here, and now we're using the minus h bar over 2. So we end up with f being equal to minus h bar over 2, d equal to 0. So we end up with this. Uh, when we factor out the h bar over 2, we now have this. So this is the matrix representation of the SZ. Uh, so the, the Z component of our spin angular momentum. Uh, then so for the raising and lowering operators, which is this S plus and S minus, we can once again use the same uh, eigenvalue for that. Uh, and so if we have uh, M equals one half for our chi plus and M equals minus one half for our chi minus, so we just substitute in the one half for S's in this and the minus uh, one halves for the m's in this when we are acting on our chi minus. Uh, and so we just kind of do some of the arithmetic and we end up with uh, this h bar times square root of one, which is just h bar. And so we end up, uh, when we act on the down the down spin state with our raising operator, we end up with the uh, within the up state uh, with a eigenvalue of h bar, and we can do the same thing uh, acting on chi plus with our lowering operator. We end up with the uh, with the spin down uh, times h bar as our eigenvalue. And so by definition, when we act with the raising operator on spin up, we get zero. And when we act with the lowering operator on spin down, we get zero because you can't go lower than the uh, down, than the spin down, than the spin of minus one half. And you can't go higher than the spin of uh, one half. And so we can look at this. Uh, so I've kind of broken it down into sort of the... Uh, the components, uh, the components times the basis here. And so we can think of the H bar as the component times our, our, uh, our basis here. And so it's just, it, you know, it, it just ends up looking like this. So we just have zero times our chi minus on this one, and then a zero times our chi plus on this one. And so that means that we have our S plus being equal to this and our S minus being equal to that. So these are the matrix representations of these raising and lowering operators. Uh, so in matrix representation, then we have this, uh, and I was going to go through sort of why that is the case. And I have it in my notes, which I'm going to uh, link to in the description down below. So if you want to sort of know why uh, why this this s plus and minus can be defined as this. In fact, uh, you usually see it as defined, so that should actually be three bars like that. Uh, so this, like the s plus is equal to sx plus i s y, and then the s minus is equal to sx minus i s y. Uh, and it just kind of has to do uh, sort of with uh, if we have our sx squared plus our sy squared, 
so uh, I'll just put this here because it's not actually equal uh, because these don't uh, these don't commute. So it's just x s x plus i s y and then s x minus i s y. Uh, and so we just kind of define this as our s plus and this as our s minus. But anyway, uh, so we can just use this. Uh, and then we can uh, take this sx and sort of define it this way, and this sy and define it this way. Uh, and the reason we can do this is because we see if we have this, uh, so if we have a half here, so half times our s plus gives us this, half times our s minus gives us this, uh, and then we have this i out here, which is the same i as out here. So we defined this i in here. So those will actually cancel out. So we have half uh, plus or half times s plus uh, and half times our s minus. This and this cancel out. One half plus one half is just equal to one. Uh, and then we can do the same thing for our s minus. So that's why we can uh, sort of. Uh, define these in this way. All right, so our sx, if we have it defined this way, if we just then substitute our matrix forms in for our s plus and our s minus, uh, then when we just add these things together, so this one plus zero and then our zero plus one will just give us a one in these off diagonal corners, zero plus zero zero plus zero in our diagonal uh, then so this this h bar which we could uh, we could distribute that out or factor that out uh, so we just get h bar over two and so this is our our s sub x here so this is the the operator in the x direction then so we can do the same thing for the y direction so we have this i s y which is uh, what we had up here. So we have that I S Y. We divide both sides by I, so we end up with this. Uh, we substitute in the S plus matrix here and the S minus matrix here. Uh, so we end up with, with uh, 1 plus 0 and then 0 minus 1 uh, in the off diagonal. Uh, so we end up with this. Uh, we can multiply uh, we can multiply through by by i over i. So we're just multiplying by i over i. Uh, so this this i times this i just turns into a minus, which is where this minus right here comes from. We get i back up in the numerator, uh, and we end up with this. And so uh, then we just uh, distribute this i into the matrix there, and we end up with this as our operator for the uh, y direction. And so in the end, this is what we got. Uh, so we got these right here as our spin operators. And so we can define as the Pauli matrices. So the matrix part of these, uh, so the this one, this one, and this one. So that's here, here, and here. And so we can say that our Sx is just equal to our h bar over 2 times the poly matrix uh, Sy is h bar over 2 times the y poly matrix and h bar over 2 times the z poly matrix. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I've talked about this sort of uh, derivation, quote unquote, of the poly matrices uh, before uh, and in the in the uh, lecture notes that I'm going to link to in the description I actually have a link to another video by by another youtuber who uh, sort of derives these in a, a different way using sort of a different method and it's it's an interesting method but uh, I was just kind of going off of the Griffiths textbook uh, but anyway, so this is how we end up with our our uh, our operators, our spin operators here for uh, a spin one half particle. 
Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one.